okay? And let's start. Um, hello everyone. Welcome to my talk about uh, bringing documentation to life with S. Dr. Graham. Thanks for coming here, for giving your time to my talk. Um, my name is Mark Schlichting. And um, before we dive into the topic, a little bit of introduction about myself. Um, just to let you know who talks to you. Um, I'm a software engineer working in Basel, with um, I'm regularly organizing the Hackathon in Basel itself, where we started the whole Hackathon in five years ago. Now it's kind of spreading around the world, which is really nice to see. There are lots of Hackathons happening. If you want to know what a Hackathon is, um, stop by at hackathon.net. And if you're around Switzerland, sometimes there are probably once a month a uh, um, hackathon in the city we leave. So I would be happy to meet you somewhere, some, some, sometimes there. If you want to contact me, there's my Twitter handle, as well as my email address. Feel free to drop me a note or message anytime. Okay. So, what will this talk be about? I'll give you a short overview. First, we we have to look at the current situation in the world of documentation. What do we do when we document? And I give you an introduction to ASCII Doc and then ASCII Doctor. Um, as well as Gradle, as I want to show you the great power that comes out of the combination of the two. Then I have some demo time for you, so it's not just looking at slides here. I also want to show you practical examples and how, how nice it is to use the whole setup. And when we come to living documentation, as I promised you in the abstract, I have even more demonstration work for you to show for more what what living documentation really means. And um, by the end we have even more additional boosts I can I can tell you about to get you on the topic of SD Doctor Grail. So looking at the current situation, what what's today the use case or the case you need to do documentation. We have several systems, you can see here like chaos coming around, which really bother us or hassle us in the, in the work we need to do to get our documentation done. Um, basically, those drive us crazy because it's, it's a different tool set than we use to when we develop. It's not as floating, especially if we come to the most recent development in software, in the creation of software applications where we want to do continuous delivery, where we have to do automation as much as possible, and where we leverage from all the powers that come from all the utilities we use. The documentation sometimes feels like a step back, okay, and now I need to do the documentation and think of so much details to bring them aligned with my current situation with the project. It would be really nice if, if doing the documentation is as fluent and as easy as we as we can do if you can do code or if you just open our email editor and drop an email to someone. And who comes in to do that is ASCII Doctor. ASCII Doctor is based on ASCII Doc as a syntax. ASCII Doc is a fairly old system compared to the new movement with ASCII Doctor. So first, a look at the ASCII doc syntax, which is shown right here on the left, and um, it's really tiny here. Uh, later in the examples, I can show you more detail how, how concise and how easy to learn it is. But this just gives a first impression of how little or how easy it is to get from an ASCII doc documentation to a nicely formatted document. And um, just to quote someone. I found a quote from Linus Torvalds who bought us the nice tools or the nice Linux and Git and he, the master himself, says use ASCII doc. <laughs> and um, he stated that it's actually readable and easier to pass than other formats. It, so he really, he really also is on the train of ASCII doc. <clears throat> now, from ASCII doc to ASCII doctor, it is that as the implementation of the ASCII doc processor got fairly old and was hardly to or hardly to integrate with modern tools, 
So SD Doctor was created, which is a new modern implementation um, of the SD Docs parser or converter um, using Ruby. And using Ruby really brings the, the nice thing for us on the JVM that there is JRuby. And by this combination, we are able to use all the SD Doctor stuff with a nice integration of JRuby and some wrappers on in our JVM world. So there are enough, there's already been enough work, work done so we can integrate it in our tool chain. You can, as I will show you in the examples later on. There is no, even if it's, it is implemented with Ruby, we as the JVM guys don't need to care about that. There are wrappers, we can just use all of the SD Docs world in our JVM based project. SD Doctor supports extensions, which is really nice to, to add for special functionality for our project. And um, there, there is even the possibility together with Square Group to do very simple extensions or really, really nice extensions within the build script, like a, like a blog post of Google Show that you can do something like um, the shorts of your bug tracker, like uh, in Jira, and pass that and convert that into a link to your bug tracker. And this is just a few lines of code. This is possible to see with the SD Doctor implementation. It um, provides many outperformance, of course, uh, HTML and PDF, and with PDF, other ebook formats. So, um, and on top of that, on top of this baseline we need for the regular things, we can convert SD, the output of SD Doctor basically to everything via the dev doc book tool chain. While we don't want to create doc book because it's an XML format which is not easy to maintain, um, the tool chain behind it to convert to many different other output forms is really major. And so it's nice to, that we can get from SD Doctor via Dogbook to anything else we want or we need to, we are forced to sometimes. Yeah. One question is this uh, really good tooling, the reason why you do not use Markdown instead? Because everyone else thinks to use Markdown. Yes, um, I don't I don't think really a, a comparison to, to Markdown um, within the slides, but Markdown is like the baseline of an SD format. So you have really basic formatting features. And if you then have a look at SD Doctor, then you see that there are more features provided by SD Doctor. So if you would see um, SD, uh, Markdown, SD Doctor, and LaTeX, LaTeX would be the most mm -hmm. extensive thing you can think of and do anything you can do in the layout you can think of. And Markdown is a really basic thing for. Um, like for the readme files on GitHub. And SD Docs sits in the middle of this. <clears throat> Another nice thing with, with SD Doctor is that you actually have maintainable tables. You can you can do them with ASCII or you can embed CSV files, which you which is great for bigger tables as you can load up your CSV files in your um kind of Excel or Office program to maintain big tables and then embed, even embed those into your documentation. And still, you're still not bound to a binary format which would not be able to easily compare or be And uh, finally, there are emoticons. <laughs> um, if you don't have one of them, I will show them in the end. Um, where is SD Doctor used? It's we used really widespread. We just focus most of the time on our IT projects. But the movement already got so far that they are um, using the publishers using to write books and to set the self -publish, publishing tool chain is really major. Especially as the ebook genera generation of ebooks is possible and not so complicated. Many people who write small ebooks do the self publishing using SD Doc. One example for an ebook um, I also listed in the slides at the end of the resources is the practical Ruby guide that Peter and Ruth is working on. So. <coughs> and um, as you can see here with my slides, 
it's possible to create slides with SD objects, which is really nice. Not to hassle with the uh, presentation group, but just write SD doc with the content of the slides and then fiddle a little bit, then you have a nice presentation. <laughs> and there are, um, it leverages from several JavaScript tool, uh, toolkits to do so. So it's not implementing something special, something new. It's just converting the SD doc output into what those DATJS or WinJS want to have to get the presentation into the browser. <coughs> so, on the other hand, uh, we want to combine the power of SDoctor with something that brings it into our project that enables us to use it. And here comes Gradle into play. Um, I don't expect, I, don't, I must say much about Gradle, as it's the new upcoming build system. Who has not worked with Gradle yet? Okay, that's, uh, <laughs> that's uh, as I expected. Just um, for completeness, a small example of the full Gradle example. This is a build script for Java application, but as you all have worked with Gradle, I don't need to say much about this. Um, now, the combination of those two, SQDoctor and Gradle together, this is done, as I said, with some wrappers, bringing the JRuby into our, into our build, and on top of that, the SQDoctorJ wrapper, and then the SQDoctorGradle plugin. And, as I promised you in the, in the overview, I have some examples to prepare, so let's see who you hope. First of all, why do we write? We don't want to look all the time just as at okay. This is um, an ISO to syntax. So you see like similar to Markdown, you have for markers for the heading levels, you have um, metadata you can define those colon introduced things are variables, I will come to them in a later example, and then you can use the basic, the basic format and stuff you probably already know from some wiki syntax or from, or from markdown or similar. <coughs> and now as I type here and I, I would change something, I just don't want to um, all the time go onto my console like I would do here and have to type Gradle SD Doctor to generate the new version of my documentation. This is just one step too much. So um, as I just did it, I can show you first of all the, the output. So, This will be the output of my example. This is um, noteworthy. Um, SQDoc does a lot for you by default. So the default template just creates a table of contents. You can say where you want to have it on the right side or on the left side. It creates a footer at the bottom. And um, those items here is an example for those emoticons. This is from the source. You just can say tip. Or you can put, say, also info here. We compile it up. You will compile it. Reload. And here we go. Not working example. <laughs> Okay, um, I noticed that earlier, maybe it's also related to the non-working Wi-Fi. That would surprise me for the moment, okay, but let's go on. Um, apart, apart from that, it also generates 
per default be, or if you configure it in your in your build script, the PDF variant. And this is also already within table of contents, the title page, and then in here your documentation with syntax highlighting. And this is already pretty easy set up. As I can show you, with Ruby Rails script. This is all you need to set up, or this is even more than you actually need to set up a base build for SPDoctor. This is pulling in the JRuby dependency and on top of that the SPDoctor J and SPDoctor Vader plugins. And down here you have already some attributes to configure the output. We, we configure HTML5 and PDF and say for example that we want to save page numbers on the So now to the thing that we don't want to we don't want to recompile by hand every time we change something in the source document. So there are constant Gradle watch tasks into place, which I configured down here. Here I say which files I want to monitor and which tasks should be executed as soon as something changes. So I can now go to the command line, say Gradle watch, and it loads up and starts watching. And as soon as I now go to my document here and change this back to tip, save it, I can see it starts running here as it notes, notes that the source document was changed. And if I go now back to the browser, reload this, and I have my tip icon there. And this is really really handy that I don't, that I just do not need to do this interim step. I just can switch between my source document and my browser to reload and see, see the change document. If I want, to, or if I need to do PDF, and I have a PDF viewer that automatically re reloads, which um, I up now only find, uh, found with KDE, uh, unfortunately I didn't found one for macOS yet, haven't found one. Um, but Ocular for, for KDE, for example, automatically reloads PDF as soon as it changes, which is really nice because then you have, if your screen is big enough, you can edit the source document and see the PDF changing. Like, this is um, in case you, you need to create a PDF. This is also possible in the browser. You can, there are plugins you can use in the browser which would then monitor the HTML file as, in, as soon as that's changed, that it would then reload the document in the browser. Then the same thing, you edit the, the source file and get a live view on your final document. Okay. So, let's point here. That was the watch task as the first thing. Next thing to ease up or to really leverage from the power to combine, uh, combine our documentation into our build system is that we could do word number integration, which really helps us to align or to keep together what we have as a documentation with our project that we can generate on a production build or on a, on a release build the version number into the documentation and if someone opens up the documentation he really sees okay this was the documentation for version X and we never need to, uh, we, we never need to struggle with outdated documentation without knowing that we are looking at our third documentation. Let me show you how easy this can be done. This comes the watch for the moment. Get check out properties. We have here the property files for our build 
um, where we define the version number. Um, then we have our build, which configures an attribute for our this is too big, right? for uh, our SQL <laughs> um, Here we basically pipe our version information from the build into the properties for SDLocker. And um, the source for this project version, now it is a properties file, but this can be anything. With, uh, as you know, Gradle, you can pull your version number wherever you need to get it from. There are endless possibilities with Gradle. Um, and now, as I have here defined the property, I can use that within my SQL document. Here at the top, I will define now a variable for the reason about product version. And this is the blue in Windows 2. And then I can use this version number wherever I want to in the document. And by default, it is used by ASCII Doctor for the footer, as I can show you when we generate now the documentation again. Now we have it down here. This is the default template for the HTML documentation of Vestigoster. We have it here in the footer. So without doing any anything more than just including the ref number and uh, and glue it together with the uh, uh, with the variable that comes comes from the build script, I can I already have it in my documentation. Now I know which version of documentation I look at. Also back to the source code, I can of course use this in my document and throughout my document as I've done it here in the header. I used it here as the graphics product version. So and um, then in my document it would be replaced by the value of the pocket. This is of course not, not limited to the version number. I think that's, that's clear. This is, you can pack anything you want from the building and the documentation. Okay, another really nice thing of the combination great with SQ Doctor is the possibility to include tested code into your documentation. You can, as you as your our normal project do this, we have our product code, we have a unit test or whatever test to keep an eye that what we changed is actually working. And then we have our documentation. Up to now, sometimes there is a situation where we want to show some code snippets in the documentation and we go and copy part of our method into the documentation. Five months later, we realize, oh, that was refactored. What the documentation said is nowhere in the code anymore. And as doctor comes to help in this situation by letting us include snippets from our source code into the documentation. I can show you. So, our project just changed here. We now have a uh, Source name, Java demo business. This is our business code. And of course, we have tests for that. That would make sure our method returns 42. And now, the new, on the one hand, with our build does not change much. With one thing, I can make my ASCII doctor task depend on the test task. So I hook into it and make sure that every time a documentation is generated, the tests are run. And so I would not get a documentation with false examples if the tests are not there. Oh, and now in the ASCII doctor source, 
I had down here this block where I had the snippet before. Uh, I didn't really point to that, but before it was source code in the ACW file. Now, it, now I don't have code with the source code, not anymore in the ASCII.doc file, but I reference to my source still and to my Java file and include it. And as you see at the end, I specify the line of method I want to include. And the outcome of this would look like This, we actually then have just our method from our business class. We show my code method in our documentation. So, of course, um, obviously this is not the optimal solution as we, if we would now have to refactor here and extract a variable and have to do some calculation in there, and that calculation would actually be another variable. And now we would uh, regenerate our documentation. Hang on, this probably is not working as well. I think the documentation is already up to date. No. And now, Here's the problem with referencing lines, of course, this is not working. Okay. Of course, ASCII doctor has already a solution to that. We can do a reference, or not, not just by lines, we can also reference by, by text, as I can show you. So, back to our source code. I'll be, be just show my code method is gone. And now I have entered, entered code comment lines here with defining a tag. And this tag can be used then in an ASCII doctor to reference the snippet I want to use in my documentation. As you can see here at the end, I don't have, at the end of the line, I don't have any line numbers anymore. I have the tag for the snippet I want to include from the, from the source code. So my would not would not now show again the real method. And even if I refactor something in my code now, or I would include any code. This would not break the included snippet in my documentation anymore. So I did a reload. Maybe you noticed by the updated timestamps. <laughs> um, besides fixing the, the snippet and into the into the documentation, the the other benefit is also that any developer who comes to that code. In the, in the actual uh, production code and needs to reject or change something would also notice, oh, okay, this is used in the documentation. Maybe I should, after my change, check back with the documentation and see if I need to update that as well, which would not be the case by referencing it just by lines. There would be no back reference on the code that is used in the documentation. Okay. Questions? Okay, then some words about Git. Um, you you already saw with code that I that I would like Git is the demos. Um, one thing I want to stress is that with Git and um, being ASCII Docker documentation uh, ASCII based, it's really nice to deal with it in a, in a project setup where you maybe are already developing on feature branches or something because you can 
um, combine the changes in the source code, you need to implement a feature. With the changes in the documentation, you need to document the feature. And this both comes together on the master or on your development branch together, and it's not needed to track them separately. Also for code reviews, if you do pull or merge requests, you can you can really reflect is the change documented well enough, is it incorporated into the documentation. And it's really something the <coughs> the power of Git adds to the power of SDOC.great. This is um, really nice. But um, the first thing on my slide is split and structure your documentation. It's um, the thing with the variables I showed for the version number can be extended to uh, almost anything else. You can then something that might change or that needs to be configurable passed into your documentation and have them dynamic kind of. And the other thing is that you can of course use includes with your documentation. So you can split up your documentation into multiple files into chapter or module based documentation and then have it all glued together into one big document. This enables us to apply the dry principle also to our documentation. This is, we don't need to repeat things that might be needed again and again in the documentation because someone might jump into and look at a special thing and we don't want to reference, we want to show it then right there, but we don't want to du duplicate that piece of documentation, so we need, we need to maintain it again and again. So we can use include files or variables to avoid the, such application. As I said, pull and merge requests make it just easier to handle to handle documentation involvement for our project. And um, what I also like about this is that this lowers the barrier for us as technical people to do the documentation as it's the same tool chain we are used to and we like to, to work with. It's, we don't need to switch tools. We just are in the same context. We just can focus on the documentation itself and do not need to stress ourselves with uh, different tools and different workflows. <coughs> this, of course, also lowers the barrier of um, new members to your team. So no uh, or less additional tools they need to learn the faster they get into your project and can contribute. Yeah, as I said, plays well with feature branches and integrate releases and create the right documentation for your release. As I said, you always have the right documentation at hand. Okay. Um, the creation process is, uh, itself, as I already referenced to it with the watch task of SQDoc and auto update in several tools. Um, there are, of course, other ways, like the preview functionality with some plugins. For example, if I look at the idea I have done here, if I install the ASCII Doctor template uh, plugin, sorry, um, I can switch to a preview tab and have a quick preview at hand. As you see, with some special things, it has difficulties. So this is just really just preview functionality. But it's getting better and better. It's also like embedded in images and similar things are processed continuously better. And it's also, there's um, a plugin available for Eclipse and for the biggest browser there are plugins available. One word to the Firefox plugin. If you might have tried that in the couple last months, it was, uh, it has, it, is, it had difficulties. But during the last, or last, week, or last two weeks it got updated and I was told that now it should be more, more or better maintained. Some things got sorted out, so there should be more regular updates now. And the nice thing with the plugins browsers is that you can point your browser then to an ASCII file, and it would just render it in the browser. So no need to process it on the command line anymore. You can just write something and um, show it. And this is. A this is really handy and um, yeah. 
makes it easier to work with SD card. Okay, and now let's talk about specification by example and living documentation. One way to uh, make your documentation more living, I already showed by including the tested snippets into your documentation and have them validated each time you build your documentation. There is um, another perspective or another aspect of specification by example which would incorporate data which can be maintained and looked by business people into your build and then into your documentation. This is also sometimes related or mentioned together with the BDE behavior driven development. And I show you an example and show how nicely this plays together with Gradle and SDOC. Okay, let's say we still have our business function. This hasn't changed. And we have our source for our documentation. And um, as I mentioned before, you can have tables in the SVDoctor filled up with data from a CSV file, which I did here. So we have then resources, and here our CSV file, which is a data set. And this can be tested in a spot test by the unroll. Is it somehow readable or is it too small? It's just too small. Too small. Okay. And like this. And This is not, not really the important thing. This is a um, standard spot where you have unroll, where it would process things it, can, it gets from a data provider. And as a data provider, I down here read the CSV file, read the lines, and split them by the separator, separation character. And this is then picked up by Spock as a data provider. And Spock would process then every line. I, I will show you in the execution phase. And, um, validate those data so it's actually working with my system. So and if we now say SP doctor and the SP doctor task depends on the test task, so it executes the Spock test and validates the data and the CSV file. My whole build is executed by generating documentation. And now let's have a look at our test results. Test reports. This is the result from our spoke test, and here in the spoke test we see it picks up the, the lines from our CSV file and validates it each. This is the unroll annotation in the spoke test. And if we look at our documentation, we load it. And you see down there it's trying to fetch the <laughs> to fetch the font. Um, Good. This is where the original document was. Yeah. 
you go. Here we see now the table. Uh, no, here, here we see now the table in our documentation, and this is populated as we saw in the source code from our CSV file. So now we have the full circle. We have a CSV file which is editable and openable by different people with their standard tool Excel. Right? And we incorporate that CSV file in our documentation, so it gets context from our documentation, and people can read it and see this is how this data is used. And on the other hand, we have our stock test, where this data is picked up and tested against our system. And this is the, the whole life cycle. And then even enables on top of that, the business people who get explained, OK, this is the project. You need to click that icon to execute the test on your machine. And you can open it and change this CSV file um, to play around with the behavior of our system and see how it behaves. And this is um, bringing it together and shorten the feedback cycle if someone needs to validate or, or validate an assumption against the system without, uh, without disturbing the development. Okay, then additional powers, finally. Um, you cannot just write text, create tables, and include nice pictures. You can even generate pictures with SDGopter. There is the SDGopter diagrams plugin, which enables us to use Plan, UML, Vita, and several other ASCII-based formats to draw pictures. And ASCII art like this would be rendered with Dika down into a, such a simple diagram. Even simple diagrams are often much more useful than two paragraphs of text, so it's really nice to use that and really useful, right? I figured. And on the other hand, this is still versionable and con comparable or differable with Git. So if someone changed that diagram and I look at the source file, I see what he changed. And it's not buried into a, in a binary format. Yeah. And now, how to get started? I recommend if you want to play around with SP Doctor and Gradle, the Lazy Bones template. This is the most easy way to get us fully set up SP Doctor builds with Gradle. Just do Lazy Bones create SP Doctor Gradle, your, your demo project, and play around with it. Okay. Thanks for your time and your attention. May I answer any questions? Okay then, if the questions come up later, again my email address, my Twitter handle, very welcome to hear from you. Thanks a lot.